so now as we get to Miami at number 14, Mel Kuyper, who are your bets to battle? It's Devontae Parker, definitely, clearly number one overall in terms of the big board. He's eighth right now on the big board. He's the best player by far. Melvin Gordon, the third, right behind Todd Gurley. Both those players could make sense for the Miami Dolphins. Malcolm Brown, a great defensive tackle in Texas. Bud Dupree, you thought he could have been a possibility with New Orleans, possibility with Atlanta, outside pass rusher from Kentucky. And Brashad Perriman, arguably the most physically talented wide receiver in this draft with four 2-5 speed, had some concentration drops, but he's got a ton of talent. Another player in the mix for Miami may be Kevin Johnson, cornerback Wake Forest. Cornerbacks, we said, would they be overdrafted a bit because of these wide receivers are being brought into the NFL every year. We saw Trey Waynes go earlier to Minnesota. Kevin Johnson, a real good cover guy at Wake Forest. You got Parker, you got situation with MG3, Melvin Gordon out of Wisconsin. I think the board fell right for the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins at 8-8, eight eight. let's remind everybody, and Dominican Sue is now a member of the Dolphins. So this team that's been in the middle and beat New England and almost beat Green Bay and almost beat Denver, but their identity, what are they? Well, with Dominican Sue, that changes the identity department. Now what do they get? Well, we've been saying this for six years. They bring in free agents, they get rid of these free agents. We were excited about Mike Wallace, Donald Ellerby, Philip Wheeler. They're gone. They lost Clay, a good tight end. They bring in another tight end. They, they've had a lot of people coming and going in the middle of the night. They need a cornerback to replace Cortland Finnegan. They need somebody inside on defense to help Indomitian Sue because Randy Starks left town, and they could use another wide receiver. They just lost Mike Wallace and Brian Hartline, and I really like the progress Ryan Tannehill has made, Lewis. Yeah. So Devontae Parker does make sense. Yeah, they need to help Ryan, Ryan Tannehill in a number of different ways. Sacked 46 times last year. They're taking away all his weapons as you talk about. Well, th this is sets up for a guy like Devontae Parker to go ahead and draft him. With Mike Wallace and those guys, I mean, they have no firepower on the outside. Jarvis Landry, nice slot receiver. They need somebody to stretch the field outside the numbers. And you think about what they've already added with Kenny Stills coming over from New Orleans and Greg Jennings. But Devontae Parker would give Ryan Tannehill no more excuses. Sure. So the Miami Dolphins, look, this is a division that they get Sue. Buffalo has a whole new change with Shady McCoy. The Jets have a change. They got to go get New England. Who do they get in the draft? With the 14th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Devontae Parker, wide receiver, Louisville. Well, so as expected, the third wide receiver uh, has gone in the top half of this draft. Last year we had, what, five in the first round? We had seven in the second round. So now the Miami Dolphins have Parker, and we will examine that in a moment. Came up and made this move. So that's the Chargers in a minute. That's my guess. I know they're looking at him. Meanwhile, Miami has gone to Parker. Yeah, Parker starts off, you know, he gets hurt. Broken bone in his foot, left foot injury, fall practice in late August, has surgery. Comes back against NC State October 18th. Nine catches, 132 yards. Did a great job the remainder of the season. This is a kid at 6'2 and a half, 211 pounds, with a tremendous catch radius. Reminds me a lot of A.J. Green. Like he can be an outstanding go-to option in the NFL. You add Kenny Stills coming over from New Orleans. You bring in a veteran like Greg Jennings. His father, Devontae Parker's father, Anthony Shellman, a real good running back at Louisville back in the early 90s for Howard Schnellenberger. He did a great job when Teddy Bridgewater was there. Even when Teddy Bridgewater moved on, the production was excellent. What I like about him, he will work hard. He'll block. He's been a respected team leader during dating all the way back to his high school days. So he brings talent. And he brings great character as well to the wide receiver position. When you do it for two different offensive coordinators, that tells me something. He's a natural. He's a quick study. North-south runner, he has finishing speed. You talked about that catch radius. He can cut the flight that time down about two feet, Mel, against tight coverage. That always wins. He's got to stay healthy. He's got to get stronger. That's his only weakness. He has not been durable. Yeah, absolutely. He's a guy who snatches the ball out of the air aggressively. In some of those contested catch situations that you talk about, he's been out physical at the point of attack. But tracking the ball down the field and making big plays, he's done it in the various different ways. He'll be that outside lane threat, that Z or X, depending upon where they want to put him, and help out Jarvis Landry and give Ryan Tannehill just another weapon to work with down the field. 